The following program is intended for a mature audience. Viewer discretion is advised. This I've got to see. It's worth watching, so stay tuned. Welcome, gentlemen. Happy Friday. Fantastic to see you guys. Roger came in. Randy came in. Derek's here. Good to see you, man. You guys are phenomenal. Bernard's here. It's like JT came in. You guys are awesome. Let's go ahead and jump into our show for today. Cynthia Sexcapade Spot, which we unveil about the last 10 minutes of the show. Let's get a preview of that right now. Here we go. I love surprises. I love surprises. <laughs> Roger, I don't think you're looking at the same screen as I am. Okay, there he is. There he is. Now he's back. He's back. Roger's back. Okay. It's all good. It's a surprise, baby. Roger's a surprise. You do not want to ask Roger for a surprise. <laughs> From me to you. Especially if your name is Kyle in Boston. What what happens in Boston stays in Boston. I don't think Kyle's on here right now. <laughs> Roger's so subtle. He never kisses and tells. That's one thing. If you want to hook up with Roger, he never kisses and tells. <laughs> I saw Jason was Jason was contemplating. Like, mm. <laughs> yeah, I see it there. I saw. I saw that. I got it. All right, let's go. <laughs> let's go and jump forward. You guys are fantastic. Happy Friday all around the world or Saturday, even better. Our staircase of courage question for today. Oh, look at this. She's laying on the bed. She was kicking the sheets all around and she pushed push some things she pushed some things off the bed staircase of courage question for today as long as you're not pushing sheets off the bed right now in which case <laughs> go for it why are you you know yeah just keep us on in the background and let roger make those obscene gestures that he loves to do he'll cheer you on robert only roger only charges a dollar a minute to cheer, to cheer you on in the bedroom <laughs> it's a reverse bedroom camera roger sees into your bedroom and he cheers you on <laughs> This is a whole new business plan we've got. Staircase of Courage question for today. What's the difference between need and want? What do you think? What's the difference between a need and a want in your mind, in your world? If you had to put... Uh, you know, a, a line down the center of the page and on one side is needs and on other sides is our wants. Can you give us an example? Give us an example of a need versus a want. What do you think the difference is? And while you're typing that, I'm going to go ahead and read a post from the forum. We've got new posts from the forum, of course. I've got new videos. We're going to get into that. Here we go. Post from the forum. What would you do if you were this man? It's a shorty, but a goodie. <laughs> I don't know why I looked at Roger when I said that. It's short, but it's good. That's right. <laughs> this man posts, here's a scenario and question for the men. Last night, wife told me she wanted sex. Let's just pause a second on that one. I don't know if I should raise my hands. It feels like the, what's that? <laughs> Ricky Bobby. I don't know what to do with my hands. <laughs> wife said she wanted sex. <laughs> Wax on, wax off. Pra pra you got to practice your waxing. You got to practice your waxing. Let's get into it. Last night, wife told me she wanted sex. It was good. The problem, comma, maybe I'm being too picky, is, is that she would not kiss me in the process or before or after. Okay. Am I being too picky that she wouldn't kiss me during sex before or after? It stung a bit. I haven't brought it up, but it's kind of eating at me a bit. It's like she wanted the sex and all that goes with it, except the kiss, which I feel is a big, intimate part of it. What are your thoughts? What are your thoughts? Come on in. Unmute yourself. For those of you that are new, Andy, this is the 30 seconds that everyone likes to force me to hold tension. <laughs> like when I put my hand over my mouth, you know, I'm making you practice hold tension in your relationship. This is me holding tension. Yeah, John, come on in, buddy. Sounds like he's being really sounds like he's being really needy, you know. Um, I mean, you got she wanted to have sex, so that's a pretty amazing invitation to connect. And there could be many reasons why she didn't want to kiss for some reason. So 
I wouldn't get so uh, worked up about it or worried about it, you know, unless it becomes some, you know, more continuous thing where she doesn't want to kiss him or connect with him more generally. Yeah, that's a great point. It's um, kind of like acknowledge what the positive of what's going on, right? Like she <laughs> she asked for and initiated sex. Now, of course, I mean, we we can understand where he's coming from, right? He wants that intimacy and we and we get that. Um, so what would you say if this thought popped up in your mind, John, right? You have this like, oh, well, I really wanted to do this other thing as well. It's kind of eating at me, right? The, 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 first, the first thing I would think is uh, it's a great opportunity to do a doggy style. So you don't have to <laughs> I, did not, I did not see that coming. Maybe everybody else did. I'm a little slow today. And then uh, the, the second thing would be not to not to overanalyze or overreact to whatever the reason may be. There's a, a million reasons why she may not want to connect in that way in that moment. And, uh, you know, 999,999 of us don't have anything to do with with him, with not wanting to kiss him. So. Yeah, I like that, John. I appreciate that. Derek, did you unmute yourself? You want to come in? in? I us not put this. I just say, man, just enjoy the moment. I mean, hey, that's what she wants. <laughs> just put it on her. I mean, just, just give her your all. That's it. I mean, if you don't kiss, I mean, I understand how you feel, but at the end of the day, it's like she giving you the ultimate prize. So I would just take that run with it. Yeah, have fun with it. Why not? Right? Why look at why look at the cuff? cup half empty when there's two cups full right in front of you i wasn't sure where that was going but i i shot i went for it yeah derek i appreciate it man i appreciate it i i agree with you anybody else want to jump in on this a uh, brief thought i had was maybe maybe that's at a different level on her her staircase of intimacy like you've always said like maybe yes. sex is number eight and i was I'm like what in the hell is nine or ten it's like i want to go there <laughs> well maybe that is where that is for her right now yeah, yeah, absolutely. Let's see what what could be. I can make a joke. What could be a number nine that's above a number eight for women? I mean, what is it like? Make a sandwich. Oh, make a sandwich. I don't. This is not going in a good direction. <laughs> that was the that was the joke. Eight is sex. Nine is a sandwich. The question is, what are you gonna do with the sandwich after it's made? Right. <laughs> that's right. What's the ice cream for exactly? <laughs> yeah, Jordan, I appreciate that. That's a good point. That's an that's an excellent point. That especially right now, maybe that type of intimacy for her is higher up the staircase, right? Where and we've had men tell it, right? So where especially if you met your wife and there was a lot of partying and drinking, and that was what you based your the beginning of your relationship on, it seems that sex, especially like you know, quickies without as much foreplay, things like this are lower on the staircase. That's a great point. And intimacy can be uh, higher up the stairs for different reasons that she just doesn't want to be that close to you emotionally right now. There can be like trauma reasons in the past, but if it's brand new, it's probably because of the intimacy she wants right now. That's a great point. Right. But like John was saying, well, if we're butthurt about this, that's going to, that's going to turn her off. That's going to push her away. So yeah. Like, <laughs> So Cynthia, let me ask you, uh, should I, should this man be reading into this deeply, right? Is there something that even if he did stress about it and read into it super deeply, what, what could he do about it? Or is this a matter of, Hey, let's appreciate the moment. What would you say to this man? If he was asking you about this spot with his wife? Well, I really appreciated hearing all the feedback because, you know, as a woman, if, if I was thinking about my partner, not wanting to kiss me, that would, that would mean something. It would be kind of a, not uh, any, a level of connection. Um, it'd almost be a, a impersonal act and maybe she would want that to be impersonal. Um, but often the feminine doesn't want, you know, impersonal connection, impersonal physical touch. So this tells me that, you know, everything, all the wisdom that was just shared, that there could be, you know, reason where for her right now, this is her way of connecting and kissing is something a little bit higher on the staircase. Um, 
it also could be an expression of a more like guttural part of her sexuality where it isn't about uh, emotional connection. It's about physical release and that's okay in itself. It's kind of like there's a banquet of different energies that he gets to share with his wife, but it's also important to know if he really wants that kind of emotional intimacy as well, that he also stays connected to that while being present and um, enjoying the moment for what it is. Sure, absolutely. And staying connected and present to that. I mean, that may be a practice that he's brand new to. What is that? So what would you say that that means is staying present and connected in the middle of, um, you know, her maybe not wanting to be as close? It's, I think, holding kind of the tension. There's, there's always an attention, a tension when we know something that we want and it's not right in front of us. So can he hold that tension and can the monkey mind not get out of control? Can it be from a place of non-judgment and acceptance and enjoyment for what is? Because that's the kind of leadership energy. That's the kind of masculinity that then offers relationship to go up further on the staircase of intimacy, offers for the feminine to be a more emotionally connected because the opposite judgment, worry, concern might keep her just stuck where she's at and not wanting anything deeper or more vulnerable. Yeah, the, the judgment is certainly not a good idea. So, I mean, is it is it, she could, like you said, a physical release of, hey, she just wants to like, she just wants to fuck right now. Yes. Is, that, is that possible that she just wants to F right now? I absolutely. And a bell does go off in my mind that um, there's a, when a woman do, does just move into physicalness, there's a way that she can kind of suppress a feeling of vulnerability. So that is okay. But it does make me think that there's there is a vulnerability in that moment that she's not wanting to surrender to him with or share. Um, and that's, again, something to just kind of hold the tension with in the moment. Beautiful, well said, I appreciate it. For those of you that don't know, I think I, I failed to introduce this beautiful woman to my left. She's my fiance. We've been in private practice for about five years together, coach hundreds of men here out of Loveland, Colorado. She's the only woman allowed on this show for her feminine and professional perspective. I got a little, I got a little help with that writing. Thank you for those of you that, that helped me write that introduction. Yeah. Beautiful. Thank you. I appreciate it. So by the way, guys, if you have questions for Cynthia or for myself or for actually any scenario, I want you to raise your hand or jump in. No, you can always interrupt me. You can always interrupt whatever, you know, I'm reading or getting into. If you've got something burning that you want to bring to us or bring to the men. I really appreciate that. So let's go ahead and jump into another question from the forum. Let's go and um, I want to jump down to this other one here. I've been saving this for a couple of days. This is diving into the pool, right? So we dive down into the pool of truth and honesty and vulnerability. And then we kick up off the bottom of the pool with a perspective and a plan of what we want to do for ourselves as a man today, tomorrow, whatever length this chapter of your life is, right? It might be today. It might be the next five years. So if you were this man, what would you do? Hey guys, it was a challenging Mother's Day this past Sunday. Had everything all set to go, breakfast, bike ride, picnic, family game night, and the magician came out again. So he's talking about his own king warrior magician lover, his magician archetype. And that can be uh, the manipulator. Okay? It can be like subversive as far as arguing or intellectual arguments, I think is what he's talking about here. That part of himself came out again. But from the morning onwards, I lost control. The kids got rowdy and out of control. By the afternoon, I was yelling at them constantly, and my wife was quickly retreating. By the end of the day, she locked herself away in the bedroom so she could get away from it all. I don't blame her. I was out of control by the end of it. We talked about it later in the night. I know I've been having some anger issues lately. They're stemming from some work and midlife insecurities. I just turned 40. Something happened at the start of the day that I think set me off on a spiral of insecurity. Something to do with comparing financial success with a friend. I see this now, but it was so hard to do something about it in the moment. I wish I took a few minutes to calm myself and hit reset. 
Instead, I just keep I just kept banging at the feeling, making it more cemented and harder to change. She's not going to forgive me, quote, ruining yet another happy occasion. I get that. I don't need her forgiveness, but I do need to fix this behavior ASAP. Anybody have any strategies on how to break free from that vicious spiraling out of control cycle? Come on in. If, have you been in this spot before? I talk about anger quite a bit something that I had to go through and learn how to control, right? Like my dad brought a lot of anger home after work. My dad was from outside of Savannah, Georgia. Georgia. He was born in 1943 outside of Savannah, Georgia. So we've got some guys, he's got some country boy in him. When we came home, he wasn't always, you know, super level-headed. So I had to practice not using that type of anger with my family, with my relationships too. So have you been in a spot like this? Or are you in a spot like this now? Unmute yourself, come on in. I'm going to go ahead and start. Um, yeah, Derek, go for it. I am, uh, but um, I've been taking, I'm working on taking anger management classes to where, like, I can control myself and just try not to let it, you know, just get the best of me. It's not easy. But, you know, it's just like a, a day by day process. And ever since I've been taking the classes, it's like everything has like starting to calm down. Mm-hmm. So if I feel like if she comes to me, asks me a question, for example, if I'm mad, if I'm upset, if I'm okay, I don't take it personal. I just be like, yeah, I'm good. I mean, I am good, but I don't need her to think that just because I say that, she think I'm wrong and gets me upset to where I just rather her, like, I told you I'm good. How many times I got to tell you that? I'm, I'm not like that. So, I mean, I'm not like that. I'm trying not like to be like that anymore. So, yeah, I just be like, yeah, I'm good. And, you know, just um, politely walk away. And, you know, if I see that she's upset, I, I the thing I do now is I, I talk to her with kindness. Uh, I don't try to fight fire with fire because it, nobody solves anything like that. Yeah. Yeah, I love you coming on here and sharing that, Derek. Who has some feedback for Derek? Who can relate, who can relate to Derek's spot? Maybe you've been through it. Come on in. Thank you, Derek. That was great, buddy. Yeah, when... Like, when uh... The other gentleman started talking about, you know, in this post here about his finances and how much he makes and stuff like that. It's all part of our ego. Something, a story we, you know, experienced somewhere in life is a story we told ourselves that, okay, now I'm not good enough because he makes more money than me. You know, and that's just, that's just all identity, but it ain't our true self. I mean, People will look at me and say, oh, Rob's got the long hair, the fucking beard. You know, he's got his tattoos. He's a fucking heavy metal biker guy. <laughs> you know, I could go fucking cut all my fucking hair off, take clean shave, dress in a fucking business suit every fucking day. But I'm still my true self. My identity's changed. You know, it's just a story I told that I have to have this in life to fucking be who I am. It's not truly who I am. My my. Who I am is my true self. That's where my values come in line. And that's where this world is nowadays. We see this whole world, they, they identify with their egos. And I'm right about this because I feel this way about that. And this whole world has lost touch with their values of their true self, who they are. They just identify with their feelings now. You know? And we have to start, really start digging into our true self to know who we really are let the world know who we are not just about our identities yeah hallelujah i agree we're gonna start a gofundme to get rob shaving clean and in a business <laughs> i wonder how much it would cost what's what's the minimum how many figures are we talking here to get you to do that rob like, uh i don't i've cut my hair twice you know and i mean it, it it's part of who i am you know i'll be fine without it but I, this is what i enjoy yeah. And I don't have to I don't have to argue my case with anybody. This is just what I enjoy. Is it right? Is it wrong? Other people might see it as low. Oh, you're one of those longer fucking hate these, blah, blah, blah. Well, that's their opinion. Is it gonna kill me? Fuck no. 
I'm fine with it. They can look at me that way, you know, but when they look at my true character, who I truly am, they see something different. And that's what matters. Yeah, beautiful, phenomenal. And and if those of you that know Rob, I've known Rob about five years, like this is consistently the man that he is, right? It's, and I mean, I love it. It's how, You only have so many Fs to give in life, Rob, right? Exactly, exactly. And who gives a fuck if that guy makes more? Who, who gives a fuck if, you know, if this guy is driving around in a fucking in a Porsche and, and has this five hundred thousand dollar home. As long as you're happy with the life you're living, with what you have, all that fucking matter. Yeah, and what we never know. I mean, I'll say something that I'm sure every single guy would agree with here is that you never know what his life is like. You never know what he th- is thinking when he gets up in the morning or he goes to bed at night or if he sleeps at night or what's going to happen with, you know his life. We don't know what's going on. Otherwise, you don't yeah. know how much of that is debt. I mean, we really don't know shit about people yeah. just from seeing the outside. Yeah. And, and how much of his time is he taken away from life to, to go in, out there and make that money to have these things where he's not really enjoying his life because he's a slave. You know, almighty doubt. Yeah, exactly. So a lot going on in this post, certainly. I mean, he's mm-hmm. talking about midlife insecurities. Um, you know, the insecurity as far as money and then insecurity in his relationship, it looks like too, right? And his, she'll never forgive me of ruining yet another happy occasion. Let me, so let me steer it to another direction. Thanks, Rob. I appreciate it, buddy. Let me ask somebody else. So someone else jump in when she says she's not going to forgive me. He says, she's not going to forgive me for ruining yet another happy occasion. I don't need her forgiveness, but I do need to fix my own behavior. How about that? Has anyone been entrenched in the man, I'm just in the judgment spiral. I'm like down, I'm down the avenue of the judgment spiral. And if I can pick on Andy, Andy, good to see you come in here, man. It's met Andy in Columbus. We had some amazing steaks at Mitchell's in Columbus with Dennis Collins and a yeah. bunch of other awesome dudes. Andy, good to see you on here. I won't hold your last name against you, how close it is. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so I, I'm kind of at the end of that judgment spiral, though. We signed papers yesterday. Um, it was actually a really good day for me. Um, I, I was never going to be able to connect with, with my wife the way I want to with a woman. Um, she, she just wasn't able to make that journey with me, um, even though I, I think subconsciously I started the issues in our marriage a year ago, possibly. Um, she was the one that, that stopped, and then I, I tried and tried. And, um, but yeah, I, it's the insecurity part, hands down. Um, and you, you have to learn to have that love for yourself. Um, be able to forgive yourself, forgive other people, and, and then do the things that uh, you're grateful for and, and how you want to help other people. So where are you right now, man? If you don't mind me asking uh, for your own personal self, when you and I talked, you were kind of crushing it, reading books and yeah. absorbing right in that phase where you just can't get enough almost. And you and I talked about, you know, going slow is fast, right? Slow is fast, slowing down, actually flipping time on its head and stretching time out in a completely different way. I remember us talking about that. So where are you right now for yourself? So still, still kind of rocket shipish, right? Um, and kind of the biggest awareness spot I've noticed that is when I'm talking to people. Um, when I'm talking about a topic, I will skip around to three or four different topics within the conversation because I don't stay focused in on that one moment of what I'm talking about. Um, that's really improved a lot as I talk with like coworkers that have marriages and stuff that, hey, look out for these things. Um, and that's where I'm getting my most fulfillment anymore is helping other people, um, not just with like their relationship stuff, but at work with, hey, here's how we can listen better to each other and understand the point of view of a manager better with a coworker. Um, so the stuff we're working on here, it doesn't just apply to, to uh, your relationship with a, a, a spouse or a, a, and a woman. It, it's a way to better understand everyone. Nice, man. Okay, well, take us into it a little bit. So for yourself, though, the rocket ship, right? Yeah. What, is that, what is that like? Give us a glimpse if I pull the curtain back. And oh, I don't want to yeah. see your actual rocket ship, Andy. That's not what I'm asking. I'm not, where is this, is, where is this going? Yeah, I know that fire in your chest, man. The fucking being on fire in your chest. Yeah. Give us a glimpse of that. So yeah, I, I, when this all started, I uh, started on this growth path and I hadn't really been on a growth path for 20 years. Um, and I could not get enough. It is a pure addiction um, 
uh, of realizing you're so much more capable. You're able to do so many more things um, and the whole rest of the world that's out there. And, and it's, it's like you want to explore all of it at once. Um, and, and a lot of people say the fire hose, right? Well, I am trying to swallow the whole fire hose because I can't get enough of it. Um, I got to start kind of figuring out how to like shut off a little bit of the fire hose and know that it's a longer process to suck it in. Right. Yeah. You want to suck down the hose into your mouth as slowly. No. Nah. So <laughs> <laughs> the, the task that I get, the, the challenge that I gave you was a little bit like slow, like let's slow this down. Let's step away from the fire hydrant and go over to the drinking fountain, right? And take one little sip at a time and appreciate it basically. So instead of reading a book in three days, I suggested, what if you read one sentence a day and then meditate for two minutes or five minutes on that one sentence or journal about that one sentence or go walk in nature, you know, and think about that one sentence. Have you tried that since uh, we met? Yeah, just just the uh, trying to at home, if nobody's there, don't go read a whole book. <laughs> it actually got to where just go sit and watch the sunset. Wow. Um, just stop for a second. And that's really hard to do with like three kids and, and a, an acreage and a job. But um, to ju just enjoy more of the moments, even when they're um, like, like last night was go-kart racing and just be there with people go-kart racing. Don't try to worry about everything else. Um, just enjoy being competitive, racing the go-kart. Um, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's beautiful. I love it. That's fantastic. Well, Andy, and one of the benefits of being on here is you have both of our perspectives, feminine and masculine perspectives. We've both been doing this a long time. Do you have a question you want to put on the table or just want to share uh, anything else with the guys? I mean, no pressure. So, um, since Cynthia is here, I am super excited to start dating actually, but I'm probably not at the point I want to for another three or four months. Um, my, my soon to be ex still needs to get moved out. Um, and I got a lot of busy things to do with the kids and stuff, but I look at it as like the next greatest adventure to go on. Um, so I'm just excited about it. Oh, that's, that's, that is so awesome. And that, uh, what you just talked about, Andy, you, you talked about the practice of stillness and appreciation uh, and excitement. The, those, when you wrap that energy together, when you carry that in your presence as a man, that makes you entirely in that like top 1% of men who are moving out into the dating world. Because, you know, some gentlemen might, practice, you know, just I have to be stoic and still all the time, or I can't be connected to a feeling of passion and excitement because I fear disappointment. And women, the women that I imagine you're wanting to meet who can meet you and want to go on a journey with you and vulnerability and connection and closeness, want to feel your ability to be still and appreciate the moment, but also your excitement and your passion. So I'm so excited for, for that next stage in your journey. Yeah, I, I can't wait, but I know it's not quite time yet. There's a lot to do. Sure. Right on. Fantastic. And good to see you, man. You're in the right place. Thanks. Cynthia, I appreciate that. That's great. All right, let's go and jump into one more post from the forum. We got a couple of videos today as well. Here we go. What would you do if you were this man? This uh, inspired my staircase of courage question for today and want to honor that as well. The difference between want and need. This man posts, he says, I'm struggling a little to distinguish between needs and neediness. A little different than my question. He says, intellectually, I get that needs are natural and human and healthy, whereas neediness is about codependency and clinginess. I'm far too prone to dismiss my needs as neediness. In my last relationship, I would ask for needs to be met, like encouragement, validation, being heard and supported, being apologized to. But when met with my previous partner's resistance, defensiveness, and her own stuff, I would put up an initial fight and then quickly dismiss what I needed. I would kind of wait or sulk and build up evidence and bitterness for why I was justified in my request, and then the cycle would repeat. After two years of exhausting the strategies and capacities that I had, and also exhausting my ability to continue to show up amid escalating 
commitments without my needs being met, I called the relationship off. When it became clear that my needs were not going to be met by her at any point, despite all my efforts, it really shattered my heart and revealed the desperate little boy. I've done a lot of tending to him since, this was a year and a half ago, but I'm still a little shaky on this difference between needs and neediness. What comes up when I read that for you? That we could go a lot of ways with that. So I'm curious, maybe Andy or Jason want to come in. By the way, the, those of you that don't know, Rob, Andy, and Jason are our coaches within Great Men Move Mountains. These guys are fantastic. And the five of, the, five of us, the three of them, and Cynthia and myself are doing a retreat here at the end of August. So August 27th through the 29th. It's Friday, Saturday, Sunday, end of August here, 2021. We're going to do some clay sports shooting. The, the beginning of that Friday is what I'm hoping to squeeze in, I'm trying to get that in there. And then we're going to go up uh, into the mountains and we're going to, we're planning all that by the end of this month. So we've already got four guys that have said yes. And we don't even have an itinerary typed up yet. That's going to be the end of August. Come see us. And Andy's flying in from Spain, for those of you that don't know. Okay, so back to this question, right? The difference between needs and neediness. Uh, and his last relationship, it, from his point of view, and, the, and there's this uh, saying that says this, there's three points of view, three points of view, right? Mine, hers, and the truth. So we've got his, is that, uh, you know, his, his past wasn't supportive of him and such and such, and he ended the relationship. But he's saying that he has a, a difficult time between his own needs and neediness, you know, something healthy and something not healthy. Jason, what would you say? Come on in. Um just breathing into this a little bit um what he was describing as needs are they're wonderful things to have from another person but there's nothing you need from them because it's all stuff that you can source yourself um so you know neediness in in my you know in, if i were if i were talking to him neediness neediness would be something that is expressed in yourself when you're you're kind of demanding or expecting something of somebody else that you can actually source yourself or that you you know you feel you're entitled to because you're in a relationship or whatever along those lines it's it's kind of a it, it feels tough you know like um respect you know is, is that a need of yours well you're not going to die if you don't have it <laughs> You know, it may feel like you want to die, but you're not going to die if you don't have, if you don't have if you don't have respect. Um, however, if you source that yourself, you're not then you're never disappointed with anybody else. So I guess it, in if I was trying to put it in his terms and just relating to my own sense of neediness around other people, especially my ex-wife, um, is that. If you're going to be disappointed if somebody else doesn't give you, give you something like that, you're probably being needy. I mean, that's not a hard and fast, fast rule, but that's that's a good good place to start anyway. Yeah, I agree with you. Let's so if I take a step to the side and I ask this in a little bit different way, right? So there may be that he's leaving out the word wants. So if I were to say, what's the difference between needs and wants, and then being codependently needy? Those three things, right? So, right. so what are the difference between what I need and what I need for myself to your point and what I want to have in a relationship, what I'd like to have in a relationship versus being like codependently vamp vampiric one way or the other with the other person. Those are all different right. things. But so, but so Jason, let me actually take this a little bit different direction. It sounds like he has some shame and maybe this is, I don't know if you're seeing this as well, but it feels like he's had, is shameful around what he wants. And whether he labels it like a need or if that's needy, like labeling it good or bad, we're kind of getting into this, is it okay that I want what I want? I feel bad for wanting what I want. Um, and by the way, you're right. I agree that you may not, you're not going to be sourced by the other person, but you can want to have a good relationship, obviously. And then this man made a choice to no longer be in that relationship. And that's what he wanted. He wanted something different. But if I just point against into the shame again, Jason, what would, do you connect with feeling shameful for wanting what you want? You know, let's go there. Um, well, I don't now. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, wanting something is, is, yeah, you're, it's only a bonus if it happens, right? 
I mean, wanting something is 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 wanting something that is going to make your already great life better or yeah. your already satisfactory life better. Um, I, you know, I I think you know, and I'm living back in, into you know, 20 years of being married to a woman that I had given complete control over my self esteem. Um, and it wasn't just was she happy or sad with me, or, or you know, it was. It, if she treated me with disrespect, I felt disrespected. I felt that was a part of my identity. I was disrespectful or, you know, I was not worthy of respect. Um, and I, so I, I think when, when, you, when you cross that line or from wanting something in a relationship to needing it, I'm, just, I'm feeling this from my own experience is that when it actually changes who you are as a person and drains you, makes you feel weaker, you know, if if you, you know, if you have a want of sex, but she's not, she's not giving you sex at this moment, do you feel unattractive? Do you feel all that kind of stuff? Then it then it turns into neediness. It turns into that codependency. Like I'll only be happy if she has sex with me. I'll only be happy if she respects me. I'll only be happy if 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 she treats me nice. I'll only be happy with me if she says I did a good job emptying the trash. Whatever, you know. Yeah. Um and that's that's what it that's that's what it kind of turns the corner from a from a want into neediness. Yeah, yeah, I agree. So let me jump off from there. I appreciate it, Jason. So, and if Jumping from there, it almost feels like, okay, I can want sex. I want to have sex in a relationship. I want to have sex in my life. But as soon as I, just like you said, Jason, as soon as it turns negative, if I start to resent or angry, that's like now trying to pull or punish. But if I turn my shoulders, okay, you know, this man's wife isn't going to offer that to him. All right, where can I find passion in the world? And then maybe I'll make a choice to be no longer committed to the same woman if I'm not getting what I want in life. It's not trying to force her, it seems. Where, so yeah, let me ask you, Cynthia, the difference between that, right? So the man is the, the neediness versus needs. What would you say in this scenario here? Well, I absolutely feel in my guts that it's important for everyone to, to be solid in what they want, to be wantless. Um, I think that's only possible if you're like going to be a monk on top of a right. mountain. Yeah. Um, so that energy of being clear and proud of what you want in relationship um, with the, the like invitation of welcoming who's in your life to be part of that, but also knowing that you know, without judgment, you can move and turn your shoulders in a different direction. That is so much more of a powerful container in relationship for things to actually evolve and transmute and change than um, when any of us, but that negativity of like, why won't she give this to me? Or there's something wrong here, or I should be doing something better. That kind of, uh, it's almost like strangle holding the energy in the relationship. And a woman can feel that judgment, even if it's not spoken and she can add it to her own judgment of you. She can start to feel resentful in return. And it almost feels like uh, an energetic wall that uh, she would want to push up against to even move further away versus when there's no wall there and you're holding that container of this is, it is what I want. Um, but again, in that kingly place, that's enticing to the feminine to move closer versus trying to run away, push away, or even want to punish you for um, subconsciously making her feel inadequate. Yeah, beautiful. Just like we talk about, it's it's your intention, absolutely, and it's and what you're where where you're wanting to go with it. So speaking speaking of, let's get this from a different point of view. Let's uh, we've got Morgan Freeman on the show, and he's going to tell us how to get women. Here we go, right now. I've always felt you're a, a natural ladies' man in the sense that women really love you. The women I know who know you adore you. 
And you always seem to have a, a natural affinity around women. Would you accept that? Yes, yes. I, I, I absolutely adore women. I just do. I, you know, I'm a mama's boy. I, I absolutely love women. Uh, but you know, I also have uh, an abiding respect for them. So I think that's, that's what comes across more than, you know, I'm not what you would call a ladies' man. No. You know? I'm not a real big skirt chaser. A small-time skirt chaser? <laughs> there is a secret. I'm going to tell you after the show. <laughs> Come on, what's the secret? Don't chase women. Really? They'll chase you. Is that your strategy? Yeah. Does it work? Works very well. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to get in trouble for saying this because... How do, so expl explore this technique for me. So... What is the technique of letting them chase you? How do you make yourself known as potentially available? Just don't do it. Don't, you know, you, you meet a lady, you express to her how wonderful she looks or how you respond to the way she looks or whatever it is, and then go on about your business. And does it ever fail? They're curious, you know, they're like horses in a pasture sometimes. <laughs> you walk into a pasture and the horse, horse sees you. He's coming over to investigate. And if you, if you see a lady and you, you don't go, you know, drooling all over her, she's going to want to know why. So you've, basically a lifetime of non-drooling has been a successful strategy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, works fine. Any other tips? Um, you, you need to have a, a large amount of respect for ladies. They, they respond very well to that. How are you dealing with being a single man again after a long time married? Uh, this has happened before. Mm -hmm. What happens generally, is that uh, sort of like, oh, oh, he's back. <laughs> 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 so then you're sort of at, you know, you're, 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 in, a, you're in a good position. You know, so now, ladies. One at a time. Well, I think <laughs> one at a time, ladies. One at a time. Now he's back on the market, Morgan Freeman. Oh, my goodness. Don't chase. Share with them what you enjoy about them. Honestly, vulnerably, what you enjoy about them and have a deep respect for them at the same time, right? Share, share your sensuality, your sexuality. Yeah, Rob, go for it. Yeah, I was just going to share, you know, talking on this. She's probably seen my cat constantly coming up on my lap. Yeah, I mean, the pussy all over you, man. It's like crazy. Yeah. So bottom line is he wants to be pet, but I'm busy right now. So therefore, he's getting needy. And he keeps coming back and coming back and getting in my face and this and that. So he's getting needy for attention. Is is it a base? Is it a need for him to survive that I pet him to survive? No, that's a want. He wants to be pet. I'm busy right now, so therefore he's getting needy. You know. So, but does he need to be pet to survive to to live? No, not a basic necessity. You know, to survive. Yeah, absolutely. And what's popping into my mind is the quote, uh, you can never get enough of something you don't need. Mm -hmm. Right. So if you if you feel that that's what's going to validate you, this is where, you know, many men have said this already today. If you feel an external source is going to validate you, it's never going to be uh, fulfilling because it's not actually what you need. It's just something that you want. Exactly. Yeah. Beautiful. Love it, Rob. Fantastic. Well, for sake of time, I'm going to save the psychology secrets inside the mojo spot till Monday. Right now, we're going to get into Cynthia's sexcapade spot. Let's jump into it. Here we go right now. Yeah, Cynthia Sexcapade spot for today. It's a surprise. It and I, like I said, I love surprises. <laughs> I love surprises. Yeah, please take it away, Cynthia. Well, I loved what Morgan Freeman talked about in terms of the energy of he loves women, he respects women, but he's not chasing after women. He's not, you know falling over himself to answer their questions uh, to prove himself. And that reminds me of the topic today of, 
you know, if you're trying something new with your woman and right away, she's like asking you questions, like, what are you doing? And she wants to know all the details. It's okay to tell her, you know, it's a surprise. You don't have to, you know, chase after the horse and the paddock. You get to kind of hold the space and hold the sugar cube. And that kind of invitation to her is alluring is enticing. And so today the surprise is how we actually can activate her turn on through the tenderness and the sensuality of around her nose and around her toes. So I wanted to offer to you that another way you can lead her into a like sugar cube moment is, is tell her, hey, you know, close your eyes. And that's when you do something a little bit new. Like you might just in the kitchen, lean in and kiss her nose. Um, so next to her lips, her nose, your woman's nose actually contains more nerve endings than any other part of her face. Her nasal passages even contain erectile tissue that expands when aroused, further increasing circulation and sensitivity. Tell her to close her eyes and then kiss, nibble, or rub your nose like side to side against hers. So this kind of telling a woman to close her eyes can be a way for her to be in that like follow your lead, the surprise of your lead, but it's also a way to invite her to be very in tune to your body and to really follow and feel whatever movements, whatever ways you're touching her. You know, even in the bedroom, she might close her eyes when you're with her, but a woman can kind of go into, maybe her mind gets lost, she's thinking about her day or she's processing something inside. When you lead in some of that little dark sexual energy and say, close your eyes, it's an invitation and a titillation for her to, um, kind of submit to your energy in a way that's soft and alluring and is going to heighten her sensational experience of you however you're touching her inside or outside like tenfold and so another way that you can bring this in in something surprising is we've all heard the phrase you know toes curling in pleasure there's actually a direct neurological link between her toes and her sexual turn on, especially the big toe. Some women can experience orgasm just by the stimulation of their big toe because it activates reflexology pathways connected to her genitals. You can take the, her toe in your mouth or gently pinch the sides and roll it between your fingers. So, that can be between the sheets, but what about taking this into the bath? Uh, in the bathtub, you're together, tell her to close her eyes and simply the act of her closing her eyes and paying so much attention to you, just wash her feet, uh, wash up her calves over her knees, wash up to her thighs, but don't go any higher. Let her turn on, activate simply through the stimulation of her feet and her legs. And that's kind of a true blooming and blossoming for you. So again, this can be in the bathtub, this can be in the bedroom, it can be in the kitchen, but it is a kind of sugar cube moment that you're holding out for her uh, that just pulls and activates and draws her in. Beautiful sugar, the sugar cube moment. So I'm going to have Alexa order some sugar cubes off of Amazon. <laughs> Alexa, sugar cubes, bulk package, please. Yes, exactly. So where to take it from there? We've got about three minutes left here on this Friday. Uh, let's go ahead and honor your staircase of courage answers for today. Or also just go ahead and come in. If you want to ask a question or put something on the table before the weekend here, that's great. Otherwise, I'm going to go ahead and jump over to your answers. All right, your staircase of courage question for today, the difference between needs and wants. Cynthia, if you don't hear the chat, I'd appreciate yeah, so John it. John said, uh, you only need food, water, and air. Everything else is a want. Sex is a great example. Patrick said, need puts the obligation on the other person or partner. 
Uh, want expresses a desire. Richard said, a need is something that has to occur. A want can be considered a desire that may or may not need to happen. Uh, <laughs> I like Jason's comment about uh, the post about her not kissing because she watched Pretty Woman too many times. Uh, Patrick said, men operate on food and sex. So if he hasn't gotten an erection, um, make him a sandwich. <laughs> uh, so there's more comments about like the kissing yeah. and situation. Um, Randy had said she wanted the sex, but no closeness. And Roger said, I have found that as a relationship dwindles, good kissing is the first thing to go. Roger, thank you. You guys are pheno phenomenal. I mean, I'll add on to that. The kissing is the first thing to go. It, it's whatever that's represented in your life and your relationship, right? If it's not a, oh, I guess I can never have that again, or somehow she's in control of the, the magical kissing pass, you know, where she has to then give me the permission and, and it starts to go down that road farther and farther and farther. Now your situation's unique. Okay. But the, the theme of today, and this is what Derek was saying this is what all everyone was saying was that have fun in the moment, right? Have fun in that moment, find gratitude as much as you can. And if you have to make a bigger decision about your life or relationship, that's probably not being made right this moment, right? Take your questions to the men, come here, get on our private Facebook group, our free private Facebook group, greatmenmovemountains.com slash Facebook. You guys are phenomenal. Yeah, Rob, go ahead. Just remember, sometimes our women just want to fuck you. <laughs> you know, bottom line, sometimes they just want to fuck. They, they want to put all the lovey-dovey shit aside and they just want to fuck. Bottom line, don't yeah. take it personal. Absolutely, right? And if you get butthurt over that, that's not going to go good. You're like, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. I love it, Rob. Fantastic. Cynthia, thank you so much. You guys are phenomenal. Have a great rest of your Friday, rest of your weekend. Andy, Rob, John, Derek, you guys are fantastic. Jordan, Jason, good to see you. Bernard, Andy, good to see you, buddy. Roger, yeah, bud. Mr. Dennis is here. Patrick, Richard, JT, Leandros came in as well. Walters, good to see you, buddy. Sean, thanks for joining us. See you Monday. Well, next week, it's going to be these three gentlemen, Andy, Rob, and Jason, are going to be subbing for us next week. I'm going to be in Idaho in the forest with Steve Weinkoop. And Cynthia is going to be here. We're both working on a book. We're working on a new program. We're working on our retreat in August, a bunch of stuff. You guys are fantastic. So let Andy, Rob, and Jason know what you want to see next week. If you've got a topic, if you've got something special to them that you love, post in the Facebook group and let them know. And I'm going to, I'm going to kick them in the shin as well to be uh, reaching out to you guys and asking about topics or particular questions or scenarios. Awesome. So thank you. Thank Appreciate you. it. <laughs> Ciao, guys. Have a good one. I guess. Get more affection, love and sex in your marriage. Get less paralyzing fear and rejection. Never miss an episode. Watch anytime, anywhere, 3 a.m. on the toilet. Get full episodes. GreatMenMoveMountains.com forward slash VIP. The C-Note Show.